19th century bicycles. However superior to other animals man may be in point of intellect, it must be admitted that he is vastly inferior in his natural equipment for locomotion. Quadrupeds have twice as many legs, run faster and stand more firmly. Birds have their two legs supplemented with wings that give a wonderfully increased speed in flight. And fish, with no legs at all, run races with the fastest steamers. But man has awkwardly toddled on two stilted supports since prehistoric time, and for the first year of his life is unable to walk. A characteristic trend of the present age is toward increased speed in everything, and the most conspicuous example of accelerated speed in late years is the bicycle. It has, with its fascination of silent motion and the exhilaration of flight, driven the younger generation wild with enthusiasm, has limbered up the muscles of old age, has revolutionized the attire of men and women, and well nigh supplanted the old-fashioned use of legs. It is the most unique and ubiquitous piece of organized machinery ever made. The thoroughfares and highways of civilization fairly swarm with thousands of glistening and silently gliding wheels. The true definition of the bicycle is a two-wheel vehicle, with one wheel in front and the other in the rear, and both in the same vertical plane. Its life principle is the physical law that a rotating body tends to preserve its plane of rotation, and so it stands up when it moves, on the same principle that a top does when it spins, or a child's hoop remains erect when it rolls. A form of carriage adapted to be propelled by the muscular effort of the rider was constructed and exhibited in Paris by Blanchard and Magurier, and was described in the Journal de Paris as early as July 27, 1779. But the bicycle, the true bicycle, was the product of the 19th century. It was invented by Baron von Dreis of Mannheim on the Rhine, and it consisted of two wheels, one before the other, in the same plane. Connected together by a bar bearing a saddle, the front wheel being arranged to turn about a vertical axis and provided with a handle for guiding. The rider supported his elbows on an armrest and propelled the device by striking his toes upon the ground, and in this way thrusted himself along. This machine was called the Dreissin and was exhibited in Paris in 1816. This device, variously known as the Dreissin, Velocipede, Celerifer, Pedestrian Caracol, Dandy Horse and Hobby Horse, was introduced in New York in 1819 and was greeted for a time with great enthusiasm in that and other cities. Such devices all relied, however, upon the striking of the ground with the toes. Their fame was evanescent, and for forty years thereafter, little or no attention was paid to this means of locomotion. In 1855, Ernest Michaud, a French locksmith, applied for the first time the foot cranks and pedals to the axle of the drive wheel. In 1868 and 69, machines of this type went extensively into use. Bicycle schools and riding academies appeared all through the East, and notwithstanding the excessive muscular effort required to propel the heavy and clumsy wooden wheels, the old bone shaker was received with a furor of enthusiasm. In 1869, McGee in Paris made the entire bicycle of iron and steel. Solid rubber tires and brakes followed, and the front wheel began to grow to a larger size. This placed the weight of the rider more directly over the drive wheel, and was known as the vertical fork. By gradual steps, initiated in Starley's Rover in 1880, the high front wheel was reduced in size until the proportions of the modern safety have been obtained. Strange to say, these proportions have, through nearly a century of evolution, gone back to those employed in the old Racine, where the two wheels were of the same size. The most important of all modern improvements on the bicycle was perhaps the pneumatic tyre. It furnishes not only an elastic bearing which cushions the jar, but also makes a broader tread that renders cycling on the soft roads of the country at once practical and delightful. Among the many modifications of the bicycle as used today may be mentioned the drop frame, which has made cycling possible for ladies, the tandem, for two riders, the sextet or octet, carrying six or eight riders and resembling a centipede movement and an express train in speed, also, the ice velocipede, in which two runners are combined with a spiked driving wheel, and the hydrocycle, or water velocipede, in which the drive wheel, formed with paddles, is used to propel a buoyant hull through the water. The bicycle is certainly an invention for the future. <laughs>